Hello everybody, my name is Joaquin Ravello and welcome to our CSSI YouTube channel. In light of the new nozzle uh, experiments that we've been performing, I've created a few videos explaining the dynamics of what you will read in the research paper, which you can find in the description down below or at CSSI.space. Please make sure to read these as we've also added a few other research papers that we've uh, been writing in the past two years. Uh, one on regression rates actually that I think you'll enjoy. So again, CSSI.space. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be explaining a little bit about how rocket nozzles work. Effective propulsion systems convert as much high temperature random moving exhaust from the combustion chamber into linear supersonic velocity at the nozzle exit. As a result, a force is produced, which is known as the thrust, according to the dynamics of Newton's third law. The most efficient rockets convert all of the fuel's stored chemical energy into usable thrust, which is caused by the highly exothermic combustion of large hydro chains which in this experiment and in CSSI, we use uh, paraffin wax. Higher thrust can be achieved by either shooting more exhaust out of the rocket or accelerating it so it reaches faster velocities according to Newton's second law. And as I quote, the resultant of the forces acting on the particle is equal to the rate of change of the linear momentum of the particle. As a result, higher exit velocities result in higher thrust, which you can see in the equation right here. For the exhaust to reach high exit velocities, the nozzle is pinched, creating a converging and diverging section. The throat of the nozzle, a T, is the minimum cross-sectional area between the converging and diverging section, while the exit area, which is AE, is the maximum cross-sectional area at the end of the rocket. The ratio of the exit nozzle cross-sectional area and the throat nozzle's cross-sectional area is known as the expansion ratio. So why do we even want a converging and diverging section? Well, as I mentioned before, it's the extremely fast moving exhaust uh, that creates thrust in the first place. Interestingly enough, if we decrease the throat area of the nozzle, we end up increasing the velocity of the exhaust. Why is this, you might ask? Because by the conservation of mass, the same amount of exhaust that enters the converging section of the nozzle needs to be the same amount that exits through the diverging section. So if you decrease the area of the nozzle, this principle still holds true. Hence, the only way for the same amount of mass to pass through the nozzle is for the mass to go faster in the parts where uh, the area decreases. You can sort of think of it as a hose where if you were to cover your finger over the tip of the hose, the same amount of water flows through, but in order for the mass to say this, the mass conservation of mass to say the same, the water actually needs to speed up, which is why you can spray your friends. This can be beautifully described using the continuity equation, which is seen right here. However, there is a small catch. You might initially think that we could infinitely decrease the throat area, which creates infinite velocity. However, if you keep decreasing the throat area, it will eventually reach a cross-sectional area where the flow is choked. This means that the fluid cannot move any faster through the nozzle. This occurs if the exhaust reaches um, the local speed of sound, which is sonic velocity when amp equals one. As a result, a further decrease in area chokes the flow. This is because, and I quote, pressure changes can no longer be communicated upstream as the speed of which these pressure changes are propagated is limited by the speed of sound. End quote. And it's important to note here that the local speed of sound is not the standard 1,100 uh, kilometers per hour inside the combustion chamber. Instead, the speed of sound is proportional to the square root of the temperature. Hence, the combustion chamber gets extremely hot, so the speed of sound actually increases. Choked flow at the throat is actually ideal, as the velocity is maximized without further decreasing the mass flow rate. This allows for the as much exhaust to flow through the nozzle at the highest possible velocity. Due to the inability to conserve mass, the continuity equation can unfortunately not be used in cases where uh, the flow is faster than sonic. Hence, all flow in the converging section needs to be kept at subsonic, and it's only at the throat area uh, where it's at sonic conditions, and then surprisingly, in the diverging section, it can go to supersonic speeds. This is because the divergent section of the nozzle can further accelerate the exhaust gases supersonically by increasing the cross-sectional area. In other words, this next equation actually builds on the uh, continuity equation in cases where the flow is supersonic in and can be used in any situation. And as I mentioned before, it's simply the derivation of many isentropic variables, which you can find in the description down below if you're interested. This equation actually beautifully explains mathematically uh, why the exhaust actually speeds up uh, in the divergent section. So you can see in the equation for subsonic flow, also known as Mach 1 being smaller than 1, 
the mock expression, which is the term which with m squared minus one, uh, that becomes negative. Therefore, a decrease in the area, which is shown by the negative dA, uh, results in an increase in the velocity. And the reason why that's the case is because the left-hand side of the equation uh, becomes negative from dA being negative, and the right-hand side of the equation becomes negative by the Mach expression becoming negative. Hence, the only way to balance out the equation is for dV to remain positive. It must also be noted that A and V always remain positive as area cannot be negative and velocity is always traveling in one forward direction, hence it remains positive. For supersonic flow, the Mach number is larger than one, so as a result, the Mach expression uh, remains positive. Therefore, if we were to decrease the area, which is shown by negative dA, uh, the velocity would also have to decrease, which is shown by negative dV. As you can see, this explains why uh, choked flow occurs in supersonic conditions in the convergent section. And then for sonic flow, which is when m equals one, a must be zero as the Mach expression becomes zero, which can only occur when the area is not changing, which is at the throat. Therefore, to continue increasing the velocity at supersonic speeds, the area must be increasing, which explains why uh, the diverging section actually can increase the velocity of the exhaust. And as a result, higher exit velocity results in higher specific impulse. So our goal is to design a nozzle that has choked flow conditions at the throat. Now that we've talked about the throat's cross-sectional area, let's look at the exit cross-sectional area. The thrust and hence the specific impulse is largely determined by the direction in which the exhaust travels. And this direction of exhaust actually largely depends on the ambient air pressure and the exit pressure of the nozzle. Unsurprisingly, the most efficient exhaust systems shoot exhaust completely parallel to the rocket because the reaction force caused by the rocket is directly parallel uh, to the rocket's motion. For the exit exhaust to flow parallel, uh, the exit pressure must be equivalent to the uh, ambient air pressure because larger ambient air pressure than exit pressure will essentially squeeze in on the exhaust. And as a result, the gas does not end up shooting parallel to the rocket. On the contrary, lower ambient air pressure than exit pressure results in the gas actually pushing out on the ambient air pressure, thus expanding and not shooting directly parallel to the rocket. This is actually seen in many launches uh, where you can sort of see the, the fume of the gas uh, expand the higher up it goes in altitude. And as we all know, the higher up in altitude, the lower the air pressure, hence explaining why the exhaust cloud kind of expands. Therefore, as implied, the optimal exit expansion area ratio is at the point at which the exit pressure is equivalent to the ambient air pressure, which we can actually see uh, scenarios where the exit pressure and the ambient air pressure are not the same and the fume that it creates. And furthermore, we can see from this graph that the point at which the thrust is maximized is the point at which the exit pressure is equal to the ambient air pressure. So essentially, sea level nozzles are inefficient in space and vacuum nozzles are inefficient at sea level. And due to the exit pressure relationship I just talked about, you could theoretically create an infinitely long and large cross-sectional exit area and have exhaust shooting at infinite speeds out the exit assuming you are in the vacuum. However, one major problem with using overexpanded nozzles or nozzles that are meant for vacuum conditions in sea level conditions is that you experience something called flow separation. Here, the shock wave of the exhaust can actually end up damaging the nozzle. One final thing to note about nozzles, and that's actually the shape of the nozzle. The two most common nozzle designs are conical and bell-shaped nozzles. Bell nozzles have more than 99% efficiency, while conical nozzles have efficiency between 98 and low 99%. It's also important to note that the nozzles with the highest efficiencies also have the smallest half angles. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As I stated before, please make sure to check out the new reports that we wrote on our website at CSSI.space or in the description down below. Again, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you later. Talk soon, bye.